Hi, my name is Steve Hipman from CBC Bearings and Power Transmission. Today we're going to have a brief discussion regarding friction locking devices. These devices are used to lock down a hub or component to a shaft. There are several different types. The first of is the classic, the 2005 series, which was the first of design. That's regarded as a medium to heavy torque capacity. The second one is the 1061 series, which is also a medium to heavy capacity. The third one in the range is what we call a 4061. 4061, which is a heavy duty, medium to heavy duty torque. And last but not least, we have what we call a shrink disc for locking um, a hollow bore down onto a shaft. Now we're going to show you the typical installation of a Mavlock into a hub. In this case, we're using a sprocket. That sprocket we have pre-machined to a tolerance which needs to be specified and in this case that tolerance is a H8 fit into the housing or into the hub. We take the 1061 unit, we need to have those bolts nice and relaxed so we do those, we make sure they're, uh, they're relatively undone and the unit will slide relatively easily with some clearance into the actual sprocket itself. We now apply that over the shaft, that slides on there nice and easily. As you can see everything is still relatively loose. We then take our Allen key and we do these bolts up nice and evenly. One side and then we go to the other side, as you would, as you would if you were doing up the, um, a tyre on your, on your motor vehicle. So we basically go from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock to three o'clock, over to nine o'clock. And we do that in turn nice and evenly. What we'll do once I've got those done up nice and tightly with the Allen key, we'll come back with the torque wrench and we'll torque them up to the specified torque. Now that we have the screws tightened nice and evenly, what we need to do is check the torque to ensure that those screws are done up to the specified torque. The specified torque can be found on the, on the box that the unit comes in, and in this particular case it's 17 newton metres for each screw. Again, we need to ensure that we tighten these um, evenly. So we start at 12, move to 6, go to 3, cross to 9, etc. We need to do it in that type of rotation. So we simply take the torque wrench starting at 12 o'clock, and there's our click. Your initial tightening torque needs to be 5% greater than what's rated on the box. Okay, so we're 5% over our 17, and we need to go around and ensure that each of those matches that torque limit. And in this case, we seem to be pretty good. There we go. One more step is that we need to then take the torque wrench back to the specified 17 which is 5% below what we've just done, and then go around repeating that process just to ensure that we are actually set over and above, or at least to 17. Now that the unit is completely installed on the shaft, and we're looking now at the removal of the unit. For this, what we need to do is firstly ensure there is no load on the hub, so the chain needs to be released from the sprocket, um, ensuring there's no load left on the actual hub itself. We then, we then take our wrench and we loosen, we need to loosen all of the screws which are there for the installation. Bearing in mind to loosen them only, don't remove them completely. What we need to do is, is remove maybe one or two. In this case, we'll just remove one so we come out of the through hole. There is a threaded hole opposing to that through hole. So we then engage into that threaded hole using the same screw. We do that up. You won't be able to do this without a wrench. So then we take our, our Allen key, we rotate that. What we're doing now, we're pushing the two tapers off. We're pushing one taper off the other. There she goes. So that's push the taper off, loosen the entire unit, and we're ready for disassembly. Okay, now looking at the 2005 series, which is the classic, the classic Mavlock, we're going to do the same installation with a slightly different method. You'll notice that the, the sprocket here is machined to suit the, the outside diameter of the unit, 
which is fine. But you'll also notice at the back of the unit, the back of the unit here, we have machined a clearance hole or a step. That's to ensure, for this series only, that the unit is central on the shaft. So what it's doing is actually acting as a centering tool. Okay. So now that's on there, we've loosened, the, we've loosened all the screws. So it's in its relaxed position. That goes on there nice and easily. And it's still relatively loose, as you can see. As for the 1061 series, we now take our uh, Allen key and we start to do up those screws. Again, evenly and tightly, adjusting from 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 3 o'clock, etc. Okay. So what I'll do, I'll tighten these up hand tight and then we'll come back and show you the uh, torquing of these bolts. You may have noticed that the classic series, the 2005, which we're currently working on, does have twice as many installation screws as the original 10621 which we used. Um, this is also a disadvantage of the 2005 taking twice the length of time for the installation. Now that we've got this tightened up hand tight with a wrench, we again take our torque wrench and we start to torque these up. Um, again, the torque level is available from the front of the box which it came from, in this case 17 newton metres again. We now set the torque wrench to 5% over and above the 17 and we go around ensuring that they are all up to the, the recommended torque value. Again going from, from 12 to 6 to 3 to 9, ensuring they're all done up nice and evenly and tightly. Once we've achieved that, we then set the torque wrench back up to the, or back down to the 17 5% below what we've just done, and we, and we repeat that procedure. Again, going 12, 6, 3, 9, making sure we do it all nice and evenly and tightly. Okay, now looking for removal, looking at removal of the 2005 series. It's a little bit more complex than the, the 1061 series, which again is a very simple, simple operation. What we need to do, I've actually gone around and, and pre-loosened the black-headed bolts. You'll notice that there's actually two silver-headed cap screws here. Now these silver headed cap screws are actually the removal holes. So by pre-loosening this and then pre-loosening the removal bolts, what we need to do is actually remove that entirely. So that entire screw comes all the way out. And by doing this, because of the, the short shallow tapers, this unit is, is, um, is not self-locking, so it can even get to the stage where by simply taking out these or loosening the unit, the unit will actually release on the shaft. In this case, we look to be okay. So by removing those two bright-headed cap screws, we then need to go and find the next size cap screw up. So we need to go to the workshop or the store to find the, the next size cap screw. That cap screw then goes into where we've taken out the bright, bright bolts. It screws in to what was a threaded, what was a through hole, now a threaded hole of the next size up. As we install that, we do that up. That then pushes, I can actually do this by my fingers, it, that pushes the tapers apart, loosens the unit, and separates. So that's the disassembly of the 2005 series. As you can see with our demonstration of installation and removal, the 2005 series, which is the original or the classic, has many disadvantages over that of its 1061 or 4061 series. Those being short shallow tapers, not self-locking, and also not self-centering. Many more screws to do up and undo, as opposed to the 1061, which is the long shallow taper, half as many screws, disassemble, disassembly is much easier. And the 4061 series being the heavy duty, again, half as many screws. Disassembly is, is very easy, but very heavy duty due to the large surface area. Okay, this concludes our demonstrations for our uh, friction locking devices. Trust you've enjoyed it. Should you need any more information, please don't hesitate to contact us via our website.